Do you know how to take care of your sanitation needs without running water or a working sewer? It's time for prep step three. Hi, I'm Jonathan. And Kylene Jones, and we are the Provident Preppers. Preparing for emergency sanitation requires stocking up on some basic sanitation supplies. But have you considered how you would wash your hands or your dishes without running water? Or how you will dispose of human waste if the sewer isn't working? These are a few of the questions we are going to discuss in Prep Step 3. Let's dig in. Here we go on prep step number three, basic sanitation. As you are probably aware, we started out this whole process with a personal risk evaluation. That is so important to understand the risks that you're preparing for. Also in prep step number one, we acquired a one week supply of water and a two week supply of food. If you want more information about prep step number one, drop back to Newbie Prepper 10 simple steps to get started. And prep step number two was developing your family emergency plan. There were two facets to that. The first is developing your emergency plan at home where you're able to stay and have more resources. And the second is in the event that you need to evacuate with your family. And now it's time for basic emergency sanitation. This is something that is often overlooked, but it's actually one of the most critical things we can do. If you've ever imagined what would happen if you didn't have water or sewer or garbage pickup, I think the nightmare scenario plays itself out pretty clearly. This is important. We separate this into two basic categories. The first is sanitation supplies. I don't think anybody has forgotten the beginning of this pandemic and when toilet paper was out of sight. You couldn't find it anywhere. With sanitation supplies, there are definitely availability issues and that's why it's important to stock them in your home. We target a year supply because a year supply of sanitation supplies doesn't take that much room, but boy, it can make all the difference. Sometimes it's really hard to find a place to store toilet paper because it's really bulky. In our master bathroom, we have a little toilet closet and above the door, Jonathan installed this 12 inch shelf. We are able on that shelf in that tiny bathroom where nobody can see, stock a year supply of toilet paper for four people along with feminine products. It works really well. So you might need to get a little bit creative in your thinking, but most sanitation supplies are easy to store and they have a long shelf life. Only you can clearly understand the basic sanitation supplies that your family needs. If you would like a list to stimulate your thinking, click on the card in the corner and it will take you to an article entitled Prepping for Basic Emergency Sanitation. And we have got some pretty good lists in there of things that you might want to think about. One of the things that Jonathan likes to do is to label the date of a product with the date that it was opened. For instance, this dish soap. We know that in May of 2020, this was opened. And then when it's empty, we can say, oh look, this lasted us for three months or this lasted us for two weeks. And then we can kind of gauge our quantity usage upon those numbers that we get. However, we do need to be a little bit careful with that because remember that during a crisis situation, you could incur increased usage. For instance, Clorox bleach. You may not go through that very often, but then suddenly during the pandemic, when you're disinfecting surfaces, you're using a whole lot more of that. The same thing went with Lysol spray or hand sanitizer suddenly that usage really increased so you have to think about that one thing that you also need to understand is chlorine bleach has a short shelf life the chlorine level in the clorox bleach gradually reduces so it has about a six month shelf life if you'd like to know a little bit about powdered chlorine which is called calcium hypochlorite that you could use in place of chlorine bleach just click on the card in the corner the next step is to evaluate your basic sanitation needs and that's going to change. In all the years that we've had our plan, it has to change because people change. Sometimes we have a few more people, sometimes we have less people, big people, little people, all kinds of things change. Your needs will change and the supplies that you'll need will change a little bit. There was a time in my life when diapers were one of the biggest sanitation things that I stock. I don't have very many diapers anymore. I have a few stashed away just in case we have a grandchild that has a problem or ends up running out of diapers. 
But for the most part, that's not something we stock anymore. Our needs very much have changed. No two families are alike, so don't follow somebody else's list. Create your own. In a crisis event, you may not have running water or sewer, or you might not have electricity. So these are some things we'd really like you to think about how you are going to accomplish without those wonderful conveniences that we take for granted. The first is washing your hands. This little guy took a lot more water to clean up after dinner than does his dad. And there are a lot of different alternative ways that you can plan for bathing and showering. And how about how will you do your laundry, washing and drying your clothing? In this photo, these are actually flannel squares that we have cut out of old clothing and flannel sheets that we have saved in the event of an emergency so that if we do run out of toilet paper, we have reusable toilet paper. Not my favorite choice, but something that we need to think about. Washing dishes. My best solution for that is not to have to wash dishes. So we have a nice supply of paper plates that we will depend on at first in a short-term emergency. However, if it lasts for very long, we're gonna be out of paper plates and we'll be washing dishes by hand with limited water. It's important to plan for that. And how do you maintain a clean environment? Especially during something like a pandemic, it is so important that you're able to keep your environment clean. And disinfected. And disinfected. I can't tell you how exciting it is to me when I hear the garbage man come. <laughs> it is just so cool that somebody hauls away all our garbage. <laughs> now, if that ever ceased for some reason, we've got some serious issues. This is something that people don't think about a lot because we just take it for granted. But it could be a serious issue. And how are you going to deal with that? And now for the taboo subject. How are you going to dispose of human waste? It's really important because human waste has the ability to spread so much disease so quickly. So we need to make sure that we have a plan in place to take care of that. Have you ever gone into a convenience store gas station when the toilet has broken and people have continued to use that? Think about that as you do your planning. Don't think about that. That's just it's gross. It's gross. As with each prep step, you will have reading assignments. It's important that you take time to gain the knowledge that you need so that you can come up with a good plan and prepare your family well. You will find links to the articles that need to be read in the description of the video. This is actually from Newbie Prepper Step 2 because of course this one isn't published yet, but you just go down to the bottom of the description there. It'll say show more. If you click on that, it will open it up and you will find links to each of these articles that you can just click on it and it will pop up so that you can read it. Okay, it's homework time. Stock up on basic sanitation supplies, including toilet paper, feminine supplies, soap, shampoo, toothpaste, dental floss, all the other supplies that you may need. And consider how you will be able to wash your hands, clean the dishes, shower, use the toilet without running water or sewer. And we have some great helpful ideas in these reading assignments. One of the other things that we have prepared to help you are action plans. And there is a specific action plan for sanitation. Just go to the Provident Prepper in the main menu, click on action plans. It will bring up a page where you can choose from all the action plans, select sanitation, and then it'll bring up this page. And then you just wanna click on the PDF there and it'll bring up this PDF that is printable. This PDF doesn't include everything you could possibly do or need. It just gives you some ideas, places to start so that you don't miss anything and it gives you places where you can fill in exactly what it is that you need to do. It's a good starting point where you can work out your sanitation plan. And every good plan has to be reevaluated and revised from time to time. This is usually not a big deal. It's just a matter of making note of things that you didn't maybe think about before or things that didn't go quite as planned or new ideas that you have. We have known people that have had the luggable loo but for their particular circumstances, it turned out not to work well. Think about this. You're a very tall person or a very short person or perhaps a very large person and you sit on a luggable loo to do your business and you topple over along with all the substances inside. Not a nice thought. It will work for some people. It's not going to work for everyone. Plan accordingly. Also remember that that <laughs> black seat when sitting in the sun gets very hot. We had a friend that burned his hind parts. It's true. Because he didn't realize that seat was going to be hot. So you deal with that and you adjust. <laughs> he was doing so good practicing. He just left it in the sun and then used it and it didn't go so well for him. So be willing to 
practice and revise your plan accordingly. You have your focus for now, but watch for prep step number four, which will be coming out soon on emergency evacuation. We encourage you to visit the Provident Prepper, Newbie Prepper, 10 Simple Steps to Get You Started. In this article, it just outlines all 10 steps with your reading assignments. That's where you can go so that you can read. If you want to jump ahead a little bit, you can do that. If you need to go back and see what the other steps included, it's all right there for you. And we recently released a video on disaster sanitation preps as part of a collaboration with a bunch of other really great preppers. And that's got some good information in it. You might want to take a few minutes and watch that. But then there's a basic emergency sanitation video that we have also created and it's a couple years old, but it's a really long comprehensive video and it goes through every step of emergency sanitation. And that could be helpful to you. Just make sure that when you're ready to watch it, it's gonna take a good chunk of your time, but it is very valuable. Check them out. Every time we talk about emergency sanitation, I get a renewed sense of gratitude for running water, working sewer, and a weekly trash pickup. And now for the question of the day. What are you going to do this week to help you be more prepared to meet your emergency sanitation needs? Comment below and thanks for being part of the solution.